Okay, well, um, I'm going to talk about something that definitely is a tough topic. Um, it has split churches, split fa families, split America, which for the person who's just kind of stops for a singing and thinks, where do I as a Christian, where, where should I stand? You know, I've got people on this side saying I have to do this, and people on this side I have to do saying I have to do this. But what does God say? Well, I'm going to try and give what I think is an accurate um, understanding of Jesus' take on politics. Um, so let's plow ahead. First off, don't believe everything you hear from others. Um, people who don't like our current president will always talk bad about him. It happened with um, the previous president. It's happening with this president. I mean, people pick and choose what they want to hear, and then they ignore the good that that person does. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it's like a scale. Well, he did this, but he also did this. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying sometimes we get worked up over things that are important without looking at the full picture. Um, also, don't read everything you read in the newspapers. I'm sure that everybody knows by now, or at least they should, that newspapers kind of reveal half-truths, um, which is a whole other topic. Um, and the news. I mean, if, for people who watch Fox News, for instance, um, you know, it's our president is an angel, sent from God, and he couldn't do anything wrong, but it's our last president's fault that everything's going wrong. Okay, that's that's Fox News in a nutshell. Then you have other mainstream ones that then do pretty much the exact same, exact opposite. You know, um, our last president couldn't have made a mistake if he tried, um, whereas our current president, even the things right that he does is wrong, and so on and so forth. Now, before you judge me too quickly, I do not consider myself a President Trump supporter. Um, I understand that he's my, he's my president, regardless of whether I like it or not. And I understand that um, President Obama was my president as well. Um, I have respect for the office of president, but I don't necessarily agree 100% with everybody who has held that office, um, which I think honestly most people don't. They just highlight how they don't agree with that other person over there so that they can choose to not love them. But with that being said, it kind of brings me to a single point here. It's not us versus them. It doesn't matter who the us is in that sentence or who the them is in that sentence. There is no us versus them. Um, there are, uh, <sighs> there are people who voted for some people and people who voted for other people, um, but it's us. We are Americans. Um, and I think that we would go a long way in remembering that. Um, people who were in America before... Uh, had slaves, and the majority of them were, you know, from the African American community. Thankfully, that practice is no longer practiced in America legally. That's still slavery is still a thing, but I mean legally. And I kind of have a dream that Americans will stop seeing it as us and them. I'm not trying to play the race card, but I think it kind of applies. You know, African Americans, who are they? They're Americans. You know, white people, who, who are they? They're Americans. You know, it's us, not them. And it's the exact same thing with Republicans and Democrats and those people who are in between. See, if you read the newspaper, if you watch the news, it's not, it's not us. It's us versus them. You know, the other person's always wrong. We're always right. And I think that we as people like that, but I don't think it's actually true. Now, the Republicans, conserv conservatives, those people over there, or Democrats or liberals, are the bad guys. 
you know, it, it's not it's not that cut and paste or cut and dry. It's you've got people with different views, and the majority of them want what's best for the whole, and sometimes forget that the whole is made up of individuals. It kind of gets to be a numbers game sometime, sometimes, and, and I think that we as Christians would do well to remember that it's not a numbers game and that every individual matters. That's the whole idea of not agreeing with abortion. Um, with that being said, I see a lot of Christians trying to stir the pot on both sides, and we as Christians are not called to stir the pot. Now, this is their immediate response. Well, I am just being a prophetic voice. There's no prophecy in stirring the pot and making people hate people. That's not that's not prophecy. See, it's not enough to have the words of the prophet. You have to have the heart of the prophet. And the heart of the prophet is the heart of God, that people be reconciled to God. Stirring the pot doesn't reconcile people to God. It makes people irritated, and it makes them not want to hear what you have to say. And it puts up a barrier between Christians and non-Christians. And there's this kind of movement in the Christian church where it's like, we have to let people know that we're not okay. Guess what? Everybody knows that we're not okay with some of the things that our president said. Everybody knows that. You don't have to keep harping on it because all that that does is it doesn't show, oh, we're people just like you. It shows, let's turn on somebody. Well, <laughs> this kind of isn't really the theme of scripture. Let, don't tune me out yet. Um, social change does matter to a limited degree, but it's not everything. Let me give you a hypothetical situation. Okay, let's say we right every wrong, and we solve sickness. There's no more sickness. There's no more wrong. Everybody's perfect. And then all those perfect people go to hell where they live for eternity in pain and suffering. Did it really matter that your 80 years of good in, con in con contrast to an eternity of pain? Well, no, not really. Let me give you another hypothetical. Let's say female equality is achieved. We make it where men and women are completely 100% equal in society. Problem solved. And then in the next generation, they say, you know what? This is wrong. Let's have women as lower than us again. So then all your hard work would have counted to nothing. But if you build into an eternal kingdom... That matters. That's something that you can take with you to the grave. But you don't know if the person who comes after you is going to undo the hard work that you're doing. Now, am I saying that social change is not important? No, I think it absolutely is important. But it has its place. And people are more important than the society's wrongs. Everything, everyone, everyone thinks that they know what's best. You know, they have the answer to the world's problems. They could be a politician. So they sit around and talk about all their solutions to all the problems. Well, that's not actually doing anything for God's kingdom or man's kingdom. So maybe we could not do that so much. Um, Christians can vote. There, there's nothing wrong with Christians voting. Um, but politics have no place from a pulpit. If you are a pastor, you should feel ashamed. You should feel ashamed for dividing people along Trump supporters and and anti-Trump people. You should feel ashamed for that. The defining trait of a pastor is God. We preach God. We preach Christ and him crucified. We preach the kingdom of heaven. To, to, to reduce your pulpit, which has such an important place, to politics is a complete complete it's an atrocity christians should be known for better than that we are christians first not americans first i'm not an anti-american person i've lived in america my whole life i i love this country however i will always choose christianity first if there's a law that that's passed where i have to choose between obeying god or obeying my country i will always obey god first if my country asks me to do something that i see as immoral i will not do it I obey Christ first, which means when problems come up about, like, for instance, NFL players exercising their own freedom to not stand during the national anthem, will I turn that into a thing of separating me from those people who don't have my point of view? No.
because I don't, I'm not an American first. I'm a Christian first. I think it's tragic when people disrespect people who died for the sake of our country. Oh. I think that that's tragic, but I don't think that that is more important than winning people to God. I think that in heaven there's going to be conservatives, and I think there's going to be liberals. And then there's going to be Republicans, and I think there's going to be Democrats. Not every Democrat supports abortion. Not every Republican doesn't support abortion. It's not a defined line like they make it out in, in popular news. It's not like that. You have a bunch of Americans who are stirred, and they wanted, they know that there's a change that needs to happen. They just don't know how to get there. Um, they see that you know the nation is in trouble. They just don't know how to fix that problem. And so you get a lot of people with a lot of different opinions, a lot of people with a lot of different views. Nowhere in that does Christianity take a second place to American. And yeah, I said that right. American and being an American should always come after being a Christian. Because when we get into heaven, the defining trait is not going to be our skin color. It's not going to be what nation we came from or any of that. It's going to be was our name written in the book of life. And we need to broaden our view into a more Christ-centered life. I think that the problem is that Christians are trying to be a politician first and trying to be an American first. I'm not saying you can't enjoy your country. I'm not saying you can't be loyal to your country, but Christ always gets the first. See, Jesus put it kind of like this. You can't serve two masters. In the end, you'll always pick one over the other. Well, that's kind of what a lot of people have done with nationalism and patriotism. They've made it where you have to choose between America and and salvation and going to hell. And, and it's not like that. It's definitely not like that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Countries come and go, but life goes on. If you look at history, every nation that has ever existed has risen in power and then fallen and then another one rises and another one falls judging from history it stands to reason that america will probably one day fall and when it does will life end will the christian church still endure yes of course it will of course it will and that's what i'm saying what's more important a kingdom that is already now decaying around us you can see that all around us or a kingdom that will never end. Well, this should be a no-brainer. Always show love and always choose people over politics. If your politics prevent you from loving people, you're not a Christian. That's, that's what the Bible says. You don't pick and choose between loving God or loving people. God commanded you to love people. Therefore, to obey God and to truly love God, you have to love people. And loving people requires that you accept them for who they are, even if it disagrees with your personal convictions about this nation. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have to change. We get saved, and, and God does expect for us to change, absolutely. We no longer do those, those sinful things, absolutely. But a lot, of, a lot of politics isn't sin and not sin. It's my opinion and their opinion. It's not of moral importance a lot of the time, which is why I do not call myself a conservative or a liberal. I do not call myself a Republican or a Democrat. I think they're both wrong. I think that we need to learn how to think for ourselves, not according to what our party stands for. Remember, everyone has an, has an opinion. Please be respectful, especially on social media. You're getting a bad name for Christianity and for Christ, and you're not showing Christ because here Christ is out – telling us to love our enemies, and then here we are saying, oh, all of my enemies, except for if they come from Syria, except for if they're a Democrat, except for if they don't stand during the national anthem, do you not understand what loving your enemy means, or are you just choosing to not listen to Jesus? See, I, I, I really think that this is a bigger issue that developed in the generation before mine, and it's just kind of gone through. The idea of Religion is cute, but it's not really applicable to my life. And so because Christians believed that, here they are later 
And they're kind of running into the same thing with their kids now, where the kids are saying, hmm. And obviously I'm not saying millennials have things together. I'm not saying that. Anyways. So with that being said, pray for people. Pray for the president. Pray for the last president. Pray for the future president. Pray for people who are so divided right now. Pray that there would be open doors for the gospel. Pray for people. Respect the office. Disagree with what's wrong. Agree with what's right. But disrespect. But respect the office. Acknowledge good words do. If you can't say one single thing that President Trump did right, if you can't say one single thing that President Obama did right, if you can't say one single thing that President Clinton did right, if you can't say one thing that President Clinton or uh, Bush did right, see what I mean? The problem might be you. Because every, politi every politician who has ever held an office, regardless of whether they were voted in or whether they just inherited the power like a monarchy, they've done good things and they've done bad things. I mean, if you look at it, even Adolf Hitler has done some – had done some good things. You, you, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, and I think that it's worth mentioning when somebody does something right, even if they are a terrible person. Even if they are a terrible person. Voted, voted officials should be held accountable. There's this idea that we have to get behind everything that the president does because he's the president. He was voted in, and he was voted in office, and voted officials are supposed to be held accountable. He didn't inherit a kingdom; he was voted in, and he should be held by the Constitution to a standard of some kind. Absolutely. However, we should still be respectful, and I think that there's there's a blurring of the lines there. You know, we either have to completely agree with everything that he did, or we have to be disrespectful. And I don't think it comes down to that. We should not have a rebellious attitude. Whatever our views in politics, we shouldn't have an attitude of rebellion where we just, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm just going to, you know, where it's us against the world. You know, are you always in fights and conflicts with people? Well, you, then you have a rebellious attitude. Are you still blaming your parents for things when you're 20, 30, 40, 50? You have a rebellious attitude. Get over it, forgive people, move on, and be a change in society. Absolutely. And I'm not saying stop protesting i'm not saying that that's your american right that's what america is all about go ahead and do that if you think it's it's good but just don't don't forget that people in god's eyes are either saved or not saved that is a standard description that god has are they saved or are they not saved i think the christians have kind of dropped the ball on this one i feel like they've kind of m made a, a false schism where one doesn't have to exist. Um, okay, so when something is right, stand up for that. Stand up for that. When something is wrong, don't stand up for that. It's that simple. You don't have to agree with the things that are wrong. Just respect the office. The world doesn't need more politicians. That's just true. Everybody thinks that they're a politician. Everybody has a solution to what's wrong in America today. And they're all yelling at each other. Well, it hasn't produced any visible change so far so what do you think is going to happen if we continue that same momentum if you're driving into a wall should you keep hitting the gas or should you hit reverse pull away from the wall and go in a different direction the world needs to know the love of christ and honestly christians are held accountable for this not for politics it's not that we shouldn't care about politics it's that we should not care to the point that we separate ourselves from other people because of their politics i hope that that makes sense some stand for the anthem as is their right and some don't as is their right neither have blasphemed god neither have committed an unforgivable sin some people like america some people do not like america you don't have to like america to go to heaven you don't you don't have to be white you don't have to be black. You don't have to be brown. You, you don't have to be anything. You have to be saved. That's it. That's it. There, there's no extra steps. That's, that's the last step. If people disrespecting a tradition or your nationalism, either or, offends you enough to see them as your enemy, you don't know Christ. That's not the way of Christ. 
And if you are seeking to justify your bad attitude based off what I just said, that's probably a good indicator that you're wrong. I think that that's probably good enough to just end there. Um, I want to encourage you, you know, at least think about what I said. You don't have to agree with agree with all, everything I said. Just don't be disrespectful. Um, and love people, even if you think that they're your enemies. Although I do want to say one more thing. Sometimes, as as Christians, try to make the government do something that we should be doing. We should be taking care of the poor. We should be taking care of orphans. We should be taking care of refugees. But instead, we try and pawn it off onto our government. And all the while, we try to play this holier-than-thou card. Well, our government needs to learn to love Syria and needs to learn to... That's great and everything. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But what are you doing to help the, the refugees from Syria? What are you doing to help the poor people in your, in your neighborhood? See, you're expecting for our government to be all-powerful and to reach all the way around the world to right every wrong when you yourself are not doing it in your own neighborhood. You can't fix every wrong, but you can do your part with what you have. Well, I don't have any money. Okay, raise funds. Go do a fundraiser and then give the proceeds to an organization, organization that can go. Get creative, whatever. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but the point being, it's not our job as Christians to delegate our responsibility to the government. It's our responsibility to fulfill that responsibility. I hope you kind of understand what I'm saying. So, uh, okay. Well, you have a good day.